Hi, my Tubies. It's me, Sheila True Love, and I am here with you today to uh, introduce you to someone new. Her name is Brenny Lee, B R E E N Y Lee, and she is so amazing. She says things that I feel. This woman, oh, she is amazing. Anyway, I want to um, let us all get involved in this discussion with uh, Brittany Lee when it comes to ladies, do not be desperate, please. Let's listen to what she has to say. She's from England. So she has a really cute England accent. If you might be a little thick for you, but it's not really all that thick. But just listen to what she has to say and look at the points that you feel that you can agree with. Friend the other day, and we was actually having a conversation about feminism. And he said to me, one of the reasons that men earn more than women in the workplace is because typically men don't take the first offer said to me that he earns twice as much as someone that does the same job as he does why because when they scouted him for a job he was actually in a really good job that he enjoyed he did not see the need to move and so they offered him a certain amount and he refused it he actually refused it three times until the offer was right and he said to me every guy knows you don't take the first offer offered to you duh that sounds wise, right? That makes sense. But it hit me. <laughs> yes, it does. That does not only apply to jobs. It also applies to everything in life, even relationships. You get in life what you accept. Nobody is forcing you to say yes. You get in life what you accept. And now, don't you think that's a really good point that she uh, just made here? You get out of life what you accept like you have so many females out here today they are with these oh god losers um um, i don't even want to go into how you say name calling because i don't want to do that but i love the point that she said you get out of life what you're willing to accept if you're willing to accept a man who cheats on you That's what you're going to get out of life. If you're willing to accept a dude who's going to sit up here and come home the next day, man, please. You have so many people who are in these marriages and relationships and it looks all picture perfect, but behind closed doors, the person, the, 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 the woman is being abused. She's being ignored. She's being with the silent treatment. You know, she is being literally abused physically, not only psychologically and emotionally, but she's being abused in so many other ways. But you have to keep in mind, like for real, Brittany Lee, you get out of life what you're willing to accept. If you're willing to accept those things, Incoming call. that's the way it's going to be. That's it. I got an incoming call. I can't take this. Oh, God, no. Okay, goodbye. Decline. Yeah, she wants to call. It, it, it's a client. I can't do that right now. But I will definitely call get back rejected. to her. So you definitely get out of life. Let's go back. Let's let's continue to listen, better yet. That is your problem. And how can this apply to relationships? You don't always have to say yes to the first guy that shows attention to you. Yes, he may be better than your ex. Yes, he may have his own place. Yes, he may drive a car that you could only dream of driving. That does not mean that that guy is the best for you. One of the differences between men and women is that Men do keep their options open when it comes to dating. And I guess I'm having a slight change of heart when I say that women should only date one man. And I'm of the understanding now that women, we typically put all of our eggs in one basket. Men generally put their eggs in different baskets and see which one cracks first. That's a good point. It's true. Because women, 
we usually put all our eggs in one basket where we're invested in this relationship. We put all our eggs in one basket, whereas men, they put their eggs in several different baskets to see which which basket. Yeah, that's somebody else calling. They're willing to see which basket is going to crack first. They're not sitting up here, uh, sitting here being loyal and having integrity because women, we are very, you know, very nurturing. We're very nurturing uh, type of human beings. Okay. Whereas when it comes to the men out here, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't do things in the same manner that women do. That's why there's different rules that have to be applied to men and different rules that have to be applied to women. Like for instance, women, she could be friends with men and have men as friends. Men cannot have women as friends because as we are taught and we, it's constantly drummed in our heads, men are visual, men are visual, they're visual. So this woman have a bigger booty, she has some big tits, or she's always licking her tongue out trying to show that I do incredible head. That's why women do that. They be sitting up there talking and they constantly keep licking out their tongue. You know, I'm hip to that game. I know what they be doing. Trying to be enticing to this guy. Now, considering men are visual and they're way weaker when it comes to this area in life, they can't do what women could do. You see, I could be friends with a, a with several guys because I'm not I'm not no visual person. Uh, nine times out of ten, women we focus on what's important. We know how to set priorities, you know. Whereas men, they don't care about priorities. They they got wow, look at the butt on that chick. Look at the tits on that chick. You know, so they can't do what women do. Anyway, let's get back to um. Brenny Lee. Which one they are actually more interested in. And so I am opening myself up to multiple. Aspen down. Multiple dating. And let's be correct. When a woman says she's dating multiple people, why do people always assume that she is sleeping with each and every one of them guys can date multiple people but when a woman dates multiple people it's assumed that she's sleeping with them why does a woman have to be a hoe because she's dating multiple people i think it's very very important and i was at a wedding the other day i was speaking to a girl and she's married she's got a good point why is it that when i say like i have three male friends why is it that people automatically assume that i have to be sleeping with these three male friends no i said they're friends honey i didn't say i have three male lovers i said three male friends and these male friends that I have, it's because they have proven themselves to be, you know, worthy. They have. I've had Dell in my life for as long as I've had my best friend, Teresa, which is over 30 years. Now, I met Rick. Rick is a new one somewhat, but he has proven to me that he's on Jesus Christ team. As long as you, that's the first questions that I always ask. When I meet men, at, at this stage of the game in my life, the first question I ask, is he on Satan the devil's team or is he on Jesus Christ's team? Because if he's on Jesus Christ's team, we're going to get along famously. I don't have to tell him his manly responsibility. I don't have to tell him how to treat me. I don't have to tell him. He already knows that looking and lusting after other women, the Bible says that's the same as committing the act. I don't have to tell him, you know, these things. Like the apostle Paul said, when I was a babe, I did the things of a babe. But now that I'm a man, he doesn't say now that I'm a boy, a full grown boy. No, now that I'm a man, I put those things behind me. So that's the first number one question, you know, going forward in my life now, now that I'm wiser. I think we all have become wiser at this stage of the game. Um, yeah. Are you on Jesus Christ team or are you on Satan, the devil's team? Because if they're on Satan, the devil's team, you could prepare yourself to get dogged. You can prepare yourself for it. They don't have a conscience. 
They could actually hurt you and dog you and treat you badly. And they could actually sleep peacefully at night. But if they're on Jesus Christ team and they do things that, that is hurtful to you, they are going to, their conscience is going to beat them morning, noon, and night. They're not going to be able to rest until they make things right with you. So that's the first question I always ask. I've been married for five years, she's got two kids. And she said to me, one of the dating advice that she will give me is to date around. Date different people. See what your options are. See what is available. Get to know different types of people. I always say this, dating is about data collection. And I saw a meme the other day and it said, yes, I'm single. But if you see me with someone, shh, mind your business. I'm doing interviews. <laughs> and I was like, yes, energy. I like that. That's another idea that she just posed out there. You know, while you're dating, you're supposed to date different people. You're not married. And as long as you're not married, you're single. I don't care if you're living with some dude or some dude is living with some woman. You're single. If you're not married, you're single. That means that you're dating. The person that you're living with, that's just a friend with benefits. That's all it is. That's not your husband. That's not your wife. So that's nothing more than a friend with benefits and you are still single. Don't forget to look at your tax returns when you file your taxes. It has single, married, head of household. There's nowhere in that document where it says, oh, we're shacking up and we're, we're in a relationship or we're dating and we're exclusive. No, you're either single or you're married. And as long as you're single, you should be keeping your options open. That means that you're dating different people and you're supposed to see it as you're doing interviews. Just like a person who's coming for a job, they have to come for the interview. Someone is coming to my office because they want a position that I have offered, that I have up there. I have a job and I put it out there because I'm looking for some new employees. I have to interview them. And that's the same thing you have to do when it comes to dating. This is not no relationship type of thing. You're on an interview, sweetheart. And I want to pick the best candidate. Energy, energy. It's true. Do your interviews. Don't settle. Don't just settle for whoever comes to you first. I digress. But what is the reason why we do settle for the first thing? It's genuinely because we fear that nothing better will come along. If we think about it, if you search your heart, your deepest fear is that you won't find anyone. Your deepest fear is that you will be 80 with 10 cats sitting in your house rocking backwards and forwards like, No one found me. I'm alone. Like, Babes. <laughs> now tell me that what she's saying is not correct. That's the number one reason why people are settling for the, 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 the piece of garbage that they're with because they feel that they're not going to find anything better. That's it. You either have fear or you have faith. You got to have faith that God is going to definitely bring the right person in your life. He's going to bring the right people in your life. And you don't have to have this fear that is causing you to stay in these abusive, whether it's psychological abuse or emotional abuse or physical abuse. It's all, you, you don't have to stay fearful. You have to exercise faith. You know, I think about in my past relationships, was I afraid that w w was I in these relationships based on fear that I wouldn't find anyone else that didn't no, not for me. I, I would, you have to understand I was raised for decades in a cult that I didn't know was a cult. And I was constantly taught that a woman is supposed to be a man's helper. So I gravitated towards men who always needed help. You know, when I think about it and I, I stand back and I look at it and I, I, I do a self inventory, I always had men who didn't have this stuff together because I knew that once I come into their life, I'm going to be able to do what the Bible 
said I'm supposed to do as a woman. I'm supposed to be his helper. But I never pick men who I didn't see any potential in. I only gravitated towards the men who I knew, I knew, I knew that they had potential. Was I ever wrong? Uh, no, I was never wrong. Because as long as they were with me, like let's say I met them and they was at the bottom, when they was with me, she the true love, they always rose to the top. They always rose to the to the top. But the bad thing or the sad thing is that I didn't I didn't think of in advance, the moment that they lost me or I was no longer in their life, they hit rock bottom. They end up on crack, they end up on heroin, they end up being homeless, living in homeless shelters or sleeping in cars, or sleeping on the street, or having to sleep in crack houses. That's what happened when they no longer had Sheila True Love in their life. But as long as they had me in their life, that was the same as having Jesus Christ in their life. Because Jesus Christ's spirit was operative on me to help me do what he designed me as a woman to do, and that's to be a man's helper. You know, but I think I got it a little twisted. I got it a little twisted. You know, there's other areas that a woman can be very helpful to a man other than seeing him down and out. He has absolutely nothing. And you have to come here and constantly pick him up. You know, I got it twisted, but I bet you one thing. Yeah, I, I, I got it straight now. I definitely got it straight now. Chill out. That's not true and it's not going to happen. Is that not the same reason you accepted that first offer job? Fear. Most of what we do in life comes from two places. A place of faith or a place of fear. And sadly, most of us live in this place. Fear says, let me grab it before it goes. Let me do this because you never know. Let me have this baby with this deadbeat man because I'm pushing 30 and I still have not found my husband. Faith says, don't run for that overcrowded, uncomfortable bus because in five minutes, there will be another one more comfy, more fitting for you. And I may not see it now, but I choose to believe it's coming. Fear believes in scarcity. Faith, on the other hand, believes in abundance. And fear, unfortunately, will keep you crippled. Faith, on the other hand, will keep you optimistic. Always looking on the bright side of life. Faith says, my cup is half full. Fear says, my cup is half empty. And sometimes... That is so true. Faith will always keep you hopeful. Fear will always keep you in doubt and it will keep you in a really, really bad place. Faith, you're always going to see your cup as half full. When you have fear, you see your cup as half empty. You see everything negatively. So what um, uh, Brittany Lee is saying here, I have to applaud her. She's absolutely right because most of the times you see a lot of these women or even sometimes men, you know, it goes both ways. They stand in these relationships, these dead end relationships, these abusive relationships because they feel that nothing better is going to come my way. I can't do better. Not realizing that as long as you keep these characters in your life, there's no room for better to come. But then you have a lot of people, and I'm not going to blow smoke up anybody's booty. You know, they say, yeah, you know what? That sounds good, and it looks good on paper. But the reality is, look, I'm this woman. I, I was dealing with this woman. She was 70 years old, and another woman, she was 83. And she's like, oh, really? God, God moved these people out of my way so that something better could come in my life? Yeah, right. No man is coming my way. No, no, no other man is going to come my way. I don't look like what the media promotes. I don't, you know, I, I, I have, and to be honest with you, ladies, let me tell you something. I got to just keep it real with my tubies. If you have a healthy self-esteem, if you have common sense and you have standards, you are going to be alone not alone. You're going to be single, not alone because you have friends and you have family. So you don't have to be alone, but you're going to be single for a long, long time. 
because the things that these characters are looking for today, they don't want a woman who has standards. They don't want a female who's mentally healthy and have a healthy self-esteem and damn sure she better not have common sense because they cannot easily manipulate you, take advantage of you, dominate and control. So you have, it's, it's women who have a healthy self-esteem, common sense and standards, they're far and in between. It's hard, you know, there's so few. I'm sorry to say, there's so few of those type of women and there's an abundance, there's an abundance of females out here who have no standards, no common sense and no, and let, let me tell you, forget about low self-esteem. They have no self-esteem. They need some man to validate them. They need to have some man give them the stamp of approval in order for them to feel that they're worth something. Really? Uh, yeah, right. No. So if you have those three things, a healthy self-esteem, common sense, and standards, prepare to be single for a minute. You're going to be single for a minute. And God, that maybe that's God's way of saying that you're not meant to be married or, you know, you, you may not be meant to be married. You may be meant to be a leader. You may be, you, God may have a different calling for you. You know, I don't want women to feel that well. Let me not have no self-esteem. Let me get rid of that self-esteem. Let me get rid of my common sense. But God knows if I have standards, I better I better get rid of it if I want to have myself a, a, a dude, because you're never going to get a man. A man, he wants a woman who's mentally healthy. He wants a woman who has standards. A woman who have no standards, she'll lay up with anything. I mean, go out there and pick up bums. I mean, she has no standards. He don't have to be about nothing. They don't want no woman who has common sense because common sense is going to tell you this person is mistreating me. This person is treating me badly. And I'm still, still here. If you have common sense, you wouldn't still be there. It's not about, oh, because I love him or you keep letting him off the hook. So, oh, well, he's just having a bad day. Yeah, he's just probably having a bad... Stop get, you know, giving them excuses. Stop doing that. He ain't having a bad day. He's having a bad year, a bad month. He has a bad life. Anyway, let's get back to uh, Bernie Lee. When we think of the word faith, we feel like it exists in a vacuum. We see faith as something that is airy, fairy. But the truth is, faith has a lot of foundations. It has a lot of roots. The Bible describes faith in this way. Now, faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. Again, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by what we believe and not what we see. Because sometimes what we believe and what we see are opposite to each other. Sometimes what we see is a desert. But whatever you believe is what you will see. Yes, we may believe in the invisible, but there's a knowing in your hearts. And that knowing comes from a place too. Do you believe that God has good plans for your life? Do you believe that God's plan is to prosper you and not to harm you? If you do, you'll know like Jesus said. If you ask God for a fish, will he give you a stone? Do you believe God is out here trying to trick you like, Yes, you can have it. Psych! Just kidding. And remember this, right living comes from right believing. If you believe wrong, you will live wrong wrong and most of the desperation in our life comes from unbelief we jump into a relationship with bums because we believe that that's all there is you think i'm getting older and i'm just gonna settle because and it's true because she's right because i, I I'm, a, I'm a person like that you you settle for bums because you believe that that's all there is that's out there and <clears throat> she's 27 years old so she still has um, a, a lot to learn and she's going to have to learn. That's pretty much, to be honest with you, uh, ladies, that's that's like 90% of what's out there. Bums. How many men are you going to find 
that are on Jesus Christ's team? How many men are you going to find that, you know, the book of Proverbs, it has 31 chapters. And when you think about it, the months out of the year have 31 days in a month. So there's the proverb of the day. Like today, let's say today is the 19th. Let's read Proverbs chapter 19. And then he could text message you back and forth. And we can discuss <clears throat> what we got out of the chapter. You know, what really reached your heart? What really touched you for the Proverbs of the day? That gives you topics for conversation. That gives you positive things to talk about. How many men are you going to find that want to do things like that? So like she said, a lot of the women feel that that's all you're going to find out there is a bunch of garbage. And let me tell you, ladies, if this was 40 or 50 years ago, then maybe you would have a chance. But this day and age, garbage. You're not going to find too many men who are on Jesus Christ team. They don't care about Jesus Christ. They don't care about living right, doing right. They, they sleep at night. They can't, better yet, put it this way. They can't sleep at night unless they're doing something low down, dirty, and rotten. So that's why when you see these women with men who you say, these women don't want no good, man. They want all these, these niggas that got swag, all of these bad boys, all of these niggas who make babies, because that's predominantly what's out there. Listen to a girl who knows. I, I told you, I am a, 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 an advice coach, a motivational advice coach. And I have people blowing up my phone. I have people blowing up my emails. And the things that they are telling me that they are going through with these characters out here today, ladies, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a professional psychologist, and I only talk about things that I have experienced and things that I have knowledge about. And I've done the surveys, I've done the research, I've done the interviews. And what's out there is garbage. So if you have some good men in your life, I have three good men in my life and I'm hanging on to them for my dear life. So if you have someone who's decent, hang on to them, uh, ladies, really. You hang on to those, those good guys, man, because they're, they're hard to come by. Anyway, um, I understand where she's coming from and I get it. She's like, you, you know, you have to get rid of the garbage so that God can bring something good in your life. A lot of women have gotten rid of the garbage and they're like, okay, God, Jesus Christ, where's this good that you're supposed to be bringing in my life? Nothing good has come to these women. So that makes it seem like mm -mm, somebody's trying to blow smoke up my rear end. I can't trust that. But what you have to realize is that sometimes you have a higher calling. That Not every woman is meant to be married. Not every woman is meant to be in a relationship. You may want that, but that's not your calling. Anyway, let's get back to, um, yeah. Uh, here we go. You know, and I don't want to sit here and... Um, blow smoke up women's booty because they're sitting up here talking about, uh, yeah, I let the no good toxic bastard out of my life and nothing good has come yet. He moved on to another relationship. He's laying up with somebody else, you know, and that doesn't seem fair. But little do the women know you have a different calling in life, sweetheart, whether you like it or not. because I don't see anything better coming and I don't believe I'll get what I want. Well, you said it. 
And guess what's coming into your life? Everything you don't want, but everything you think you deserve. You will get in life what you believe you deserve in life. You will get in life what you accept from life. Now back to the analogy of the job offer. And it really had me thinking, is there really such thing as a pay rise or a bonus or a promotion? Or are they just giving you what they thought you were worth that you didn't actually accept or ask for in the beginning? Are they just getting closer to what they believe you were worth in the beginning? Think about it. Think about it. My sisters, my beloveds, never settle for less because you refused to ask for more. And we as women, and I say typically, non-confrontational, we don't want to shake the boat. We don't want to ruffle feathers. We don't want to overstep. And we really don't want to trouble others. And I don't know about you guys, but if I go to a restaurant and the service is not up to par and they ask me for my feedback, best believe I'm going to give them my genuine honest feedback my mama taught me how to complain and i complain very very well (laughs) if my fries are cold i'm gonna tell them to send it back if they bring me the wrong order i'm gonna tell them i don't want that if my food arrives 45 minutes late i'm going to tell them to take it off the bill why because as a restaurant you have a service to uphold they aren't doing anything more than they should when they provide a good service your service is supposed to be excellent That's what you base your business model around, excellent customer service. So if I'm not happy, you need to change it. And the thing is, you don't have to be rude about it. I'm not rude about it. And people are probably thinking, oh, a bit feisty. I don't know if I can do that. But I'm going to need you guys to understand, asking for what you want and refusing what you don't want is not rude. It is your right as a human being, as a customer in a restaurant, as a person in a relationship. People genuinely think that, If you refuse a certain treatment, you're being rude. No, sis, you're just exercising your God-given right to choose. More of us need to be a bit more choosy when it comes to treatment. When you don't stand up for what you want in life, guess who loses? Not anybody else. You do. Now, going back to the restaurant analogy, if something is below standard, you have the right to complain without fearing that they're going to call you a or they're going to spit in your food. Like I was at a restaurant the other day and the guy came around and was like, oh, is everything okay? And I was like, well, the chips are cold. Um, the burger's cold. And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. And then my friend was like, but thank you, though. It was it was nice, though. And I'm just like, um, okay, why did you feel the need to actually pet him? He actually asked me, how was the food? Do you want me to lie? <laughs> Should I lie? <laughs> Should I now lie? He asked me how the food was. And I said, to be honest, it was cold. And he said, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I'm going to give you a hot chocolate. I said, fine. Thank you. She goes to me, oh, be careful. He doesn't spit in your hot chocolate. I'm like, what? I don't live in that place of fear. That is too exhausting for me to live in a place that says, if I complain, what if what if they leave me? What if they, what if they don't love me? No, babes. Know your value. Know what you deserve. Know the respect that you're supposed to be given. As a human being, first of all. <laughs> and like I said, you teach people... And I do appreciate what she had to say here. You know, know what you you deserve. Know your worth. If not for anything else, but as a human being. You go to a restaurant, they serve you 45 minutes later. Yeah, you're supposed to speak up on that. You serve me food and the food is cold as, you know, fries and food is cold. And I'm not supposed to say anything about that? You Nobody said you have to be rude. You have to treat people the way you want to be treated. You speak to this person the way you would want someone to speak to you. At the same time, yeah, you do have to speak up for yourself. I'm a client. I'm a customer. And if I'm not happy, then you have to do whatever it takes to make me happy. You know what I mean? I'm spending my money here. I don't know. I can't speak for all of my tubies out here. But I know me. I work hard for my money. And when I'm going to spend my money, let's just say, because I want to be catered to, normally I'm the one who's cooking, cleaning, doing the laundry, paying bills, working a full-time job, doing my ministry work, going to Christian meetings, trying to spend time with my family. I'm doing all of this. And there's times when I just don't want to do that. I'm t- How about this? I, I, I need, you know what? I need someone to cater to me. That's why me, Sheila True Love, let me tell you what I do sometimes. I don't want to be with nobody. I don't want anyone around. 
I get myself all dressed up. I make reservations at a five-star restaurant to be by myself. I have my Uber. I call Uber. They pick me up. They take me to this five-star restaurant where I know I'm going to be what? Catered to. Someone is going to cater to me. I have these, these waiters and waitresses catering to me. I came out here alone for a break. And then when I get here, you give me poor service, 45 minutes I'm waiting. When you do serve the food, food is cold. I didn't come, no, no. Yeah, I will definitely bring that to your attention. And as a human being, I have the right to do that, especially when I'm spending my money. Really? So anyway, Tubies, we're gonna close up here. The end point is ladies, do not be desperate. Don't be so desperate that you are going to lose yourself because you know narcissists, they are looking for desperate women because desperate women are vulnerable. They're easy to manipulate and be taken advantage of. They, you're, you're easy to be controlled and dominated merely because of what? Mostly for women, I got to keep it real, it's attention. Just for him to sit here and listen to you talk or look at you when you get dressed up. What? I don't got whatever. But anyway, my tubies, please don't don't fall for that. I love you. This is Sheila True Love. And please don't be desperate. Until next time, we'll talk again. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to say, because God knows I have the phone calls and the emails that are coming in. I really appreciate your gift and your donations of $7 or more for me answering your questions, you know, and the regular emails that I get, you know, like I keep saying to you, this is how I supplement my income so that I don't have to work a second job. And thank you so much because if I had to work a second job to these, I would not have the time to provide you with the entertainment. I mean, not entertainment, but the information or the encouragement that you need, you know? So again, I just wanted to say, say thank you so much for the extra work and the donations. And please, please, Tubies, keep the emails coming. Keep the calls coming. I love you so much. We'll talk again. Goodbye for now.